everybody. Welcome to another episode of Horror Movie Night, the Geekscape second annual holiday live stream edition. And I obviously can't be up here without some of my cohorts. So let's bring in a longtime best buddy of mine. He just got me Jaws the board game for Christmas that showed up in the mail the other day, and I can't wait to play it with him. Scott Roger. So I got where my... The- uh- where what? the fuck did you find that thing? Oh, oh, my beard? <laughs> yeah, I grew it. <laughs> <laughs> no, the Jaws. Um, the fun thing about the Jaws um, game, it's it's basically, what did you call it? Mousetrap? But, it's, or it's operation. operation. It's, it's just operation. operation. Jaws. Yeah. Um, so I, I, um, I went to this, the opening day of this random vintage clothing store. A vintage clothing store, mind you, not some sort of like toy collection at all and um walk around just just poking around because i was already in the building um for something else that day and i uh didn't see anything that i liked and then i looked up and i saw this thing that said jaws and i was like what what is that it's myself you know i'm like i'm, I'm thinking in my mind like what is that and i walked back over because i passed it over when i first walked into the store and um it's like this Jaws game box. And I'm like, if there's nothing in there, it's still an awesome piece of cardboard that I know one person will appreciate. And so <laughs> I I flagged down the uh, the co-owner and I'm like, are you willing to sell that? And she goes, well, let me talk to so-and-so. She asked the other guy. and He's like, yeah, sure. Why not? We got it at a church garage sale or something. And so um, I, I snagged it and I didn't have a box to put the box in. So I just wrapped it as a Christmas present and then wrapped it with, with uh um like brown paper and yeah. and apparently it made it to pa it made, in one it piece made it, it made it to pa okay yeah and it's literally just a shark with its mouth open with a bunch of shit inside of it and you have to like the best part is the, the, the steering wheel the, pi- the 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 uh, ship steering wheel what's that called the, uh the the wheel the, the <laughs> i think it's just wheel? the steering wheel i don't know <laughs> i'm not a ship man uh, but also there's a third person that needs to be here if we're going to talk horror movies. And man, are we ever talking about some schlocky shit tonight? Uh, we are joined by our third co-host, Kyle Kutka. There yeah. he is, baby. Oh, what is that face? <laughs> it's all for you, baby. You know, I'm uh, what's really happening, wearing man? a short sleeve shirt today because I was in the shower thinking about you and I was like, and I'll explain why in a second. Thank you. Um, you don't have to. I already know. <laughs> I was in the shower and I was thinking about you. And I'm like, Kyle has tattoos, right? Like Matt's the only person that's in, involved with the show that doesn't have any tattoos. And and I was like, I'm almost positive that he does. Like I can ski, see his skinny arms just like my skinny arms have tattoos. Um, so right. yeah, thank you. Thank you for validating that experience in my mind. But also um, I made a- They're temporary. Trip- yeah, they're just, they're only here for another five to 10 years. Yeah. We'll see what happens after the, your skin sloughs off and you become an actual, actual robot slug. Absolutely. Um, but I I made an oopsie today. I, well, I had a, a nasty head cold, which in the times of COVID really sucks because the anxiety just ratchets up like crazy. Through the roof. Yeah. Um, I took a, took a COVID test and negative, thank goodness. Um, boosters work, everybody. Um, but uh, I, so I've been fighting this head cold and, it, and it's, decided to just attack my sinuses today. I woke up and I was like, this is just not a good day. Too bad this is the day that I'm getting color done on my leg, my entire leg wrap, my like calf wrap. Um, so right now I'm dealing with that. And um, <laughs> hi, Chris, yes. What does Chris have any tattoos? Chris, okay, so- for, does either. Yeah, but... uh, that's that's good. Um, so for, for the casual listener who's not on the live stream, Chris Fafalios from One Hit Thunder and the wonderful band Punchline, um, who's also the producer of Krista Makes a Podcast with Krista Makes of Less Than Jake, because we are just one step away from being that cool, um, said Diamond Matt needs some tats, which uh, I think that Kyle and I are in agreement. And Brian out in the ether, he's somewhere saying, Man, I want him to make some bad decisions like my Bat Boy tattoo. <laughs> it's that Diamond Tat, uh, Diamond Matt needs some tats. Feels like a like a wrestling sign that people will hold up. <laughs> You're that, gonna like, talk Matt into it because of wrestling, okay? Yeah, it's uh, very specific to the one person that you hope is watching <laughs> wrestling that night. But, right, but it feels it feels right. Let's address what we're talking about tonight. We're talking about Silent Night, Deadly Night, Part Three. You better watch out. And I you just, better. I just want. <laughs> I want the audience to see a clip of something real quick because this was not my pick. 
for this. I agreed to it begrudgingly, but I I want Who the audience it? to just it get mine? you. It, it's indirectly your pick because you were so against what I wanted us to talk about. Guys, strap in for just a, a minute or two so I can show you a clip of a movie called Feeders 2 Sleigh Bells. No. <laughs> <laughs> just, just real quick, let's just take a quick look yeah. at what, what this movie is all about. This is the worst Christmas. Fuck you, this is the, the uh, scene that Matt sent me to try and talk me into it. That mustache is doing a lot of work. Oh, oh. Something the girls have been working on for next Christmas. <laughs> yes. Sleigh it's bells. a laser beam shot by Santa for the listener. <laughs> yeah, like, Feeders 2 Sleigh Bells is the film in which some aliens that were made for about $2 a piece <laughs> fight They're literally made out of Play-Doh. Yeah, no, it's bad. But Chris, Scott was like, look, I think we're we're nearing year eight. I think we've moved past making fun of zero budget movies. We need, we no, need to I at least. No, I said that it would be too painful for me. I was being, I, I think you're giving <laughs> me way too much credit here. I was like, that's a movie that I just don't have the energy for at the end of 2021. Maybe if 2022 is a stellar fucking year, then I can, right. I can fight my way through feeders too. But I also don't remember picking Silent Night, Deadly Night 3 um, because I would never have suggested this. Uh, the only problem is, is that we can't talk Silent Night, Deadly Night, the first one, because it's so good. Silent Night, Deadly Night 2, because it's basically a clip show of the first one. And then 4 and 5, we've already done regular episodes about. So yeah. we're kind of stuck with the third one. We, but my suggestion was the one that Matt always shoots down every single Christmas because he's a Grinch. Even though he thinks that he's the whatever ghost is the happiest ghost of Christmas. Um, he is a complete prick because he won't let us talk about Gremlins. He's like, we have nothing to talk about. I'm like, we have nothing to say. It's a perfect well, movie. You can't write off just, Silent Night, Deadly Night. We can't talk about Silent Night, Deadly Night. It's too good. Let's tackle Gremlins. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> yeah, he's got a point. <laughs> All right. Okay. I, 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 I would love ways. to talk Gremlins too, but I see I see the logic of, of, of what Mr. <laughs> Kelly's saying here. All right. So let's talk about Silent Night, Deadly Night 3. Better watch out. Uh, I mean, we were talking about how part two is basically a clip show. Part three, they're still getting some mileage out of those <laughs> out of the footage yeah. from the first movie. Certainly. <laughs> they, and we're supposed to believe that Bill choice. Mosley is the same guy as the character from the first one? No. As the little no boy way. from the first one. I just thought it was still no, chop what? chop. I was just confused. Yeah. So, so <laughs> before I mean, the play, the it was pretty one, late. Texas yeah. Chainsaw 2. I don't know. The timelines don't add up to me. The timelines are a whole... Listen, this is a film that was written in a week, as it I read on IMDb. By the director and his daughter. It was rewritten. So yeah. the funniest part about that is that 3 is so bad, uh, and, and, and it got absolutely abysmal reviews when it came out. Mm -hmm. um, the funniest thing about it is that they took the script that was originally for Silent Night, Deadly Night 3 and made Silent Night, Deadly Night 4 initiation with it. And people hate that one because they're like, it's Christmas in LA. There's no snow. That movie's awesome because it's body horror. So it's I body mean, body horror and witches. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's literally. If there's a Venn diagram, it's just a fucking circle for me. <laughs> <laughs> that's so, uh, that's all you, baby. That's great. But yeah, yeah, Scott. In the first movie, the killer is Billy, who has a brother named Ricky. Ricky. And then the oh, second Ricky's one, the second Ricky, one. Yeah, yeah right. becomes the killer. So it's I, know, I thought I had Ricky. the same issue like halfway through. I was like, I this isn't right. And then it it is right, but it's not right. But so this the, is my problem I mean, is that I, I got to say that my problem is, is that I watch Silent Night, Deadly Night every Christmas wrapping Christmas presents because mm -hmm. it's a perfect horror movie for me. Like a Christmas, it's a perfect holiday horror movie for me. It's just, it yeah. hits all the right beats. And it's from that amazing time when they could have fun, but still be serious in horror. Um, but I haven't watched Silent Night, Deadly Night 2 in at least 15 years because I saw I that mean, one first. Scott, and theoretically, all I know you watch Day Silent Night, Deadly Night 2 every, every year, year while you're robbing <laughs> you Christmas <fuck>. cakes. <laughs> <laughs> you're just missing the last 20 minutes of the That's movie. <laughs> and now, in but turn, the, the you maybe watch part, part of Silent Night, Deadly Night 3 every yeah. year. Yeah. But that's that's the crucial piece of the movie is the end of Silent Night Deadly Night 2 
is the lead in this island at Deadly Night 3, and that's why I was confusing Ricky and Billy. Yeah, no. Because I just don't care about killers' names unless they're literally on a T-shirt that I wear once a month. Yeah, yeah. Jason or right. Freddy, yeah. Uh, so, so the movie is pretty hard to follow to begin with, even as someone who's watched almost all five of these movies pretty regularly. And they try to do the exposition so that we follow, and I didn't. No. <laughs> I did not so follow. Like, my attempt to explain what's happening in this movie for the people who are watching who've never seen this movie, lucky you, um, is that for some reason, even though Ricky went on a killing spree and was shot by the police, uh, doctors decided to reassemble his brain so that he would have all of his original memories from before he went crazy. Without uh, telling the police, as we find, yeah, like, a little yeah. a little bit ahead of the, uh, the curve. But they didn't tell the police that they were going to do all this shit to the, a killer's brain. Um, yeah, no, just... Which, I don't know, there's got to be a form or something that they so, need to sign. So now, so, now, so now Ricky's corpse is just laying in a hospital with a brain bigger than his head exposed inside of a glass jar that's have, like frankenstein so into his skull it. <laughs> like, so the the, the, the jello one yeah it is literally <laughs> jello yeah. so i have so many questions about that um they they're just logistical questions here um why is the jar only half full of of liquid? Like, wouldn't you want it to be completely full? Wouldn't it be weird when he's sloshing around with it? And is is, is the one part that's above the liquid gonna get dry? And he's got to slosh his head to make it to like you know baste his brain. Um, you have to the, aerate it. There's like you just gotta like sort of like a snifter. You gotta well, yeah. And, and what about when he's out in the sun? Does it get hot? Can he feel? <laughs> can he feel heat and cold in his brain? Material? Well, oh, man, yeah, he's lucky he got out in the winter. Uh, when it was still a uh, cold out there, if it was summertime, we would have been fucked. Well, the the other thing is that the fact that his brain is exposed seems to be like a non-starter point for people because there's a scene where he kills a nurse, and and I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but like, first Not of all, there's a, <laughs> there's there's a well, I, well, I'll get back to this nurse in a second. Actually, we do need to address that the other piece of this plot is oh, that yeah. this this doctor who's also trying to rebuild Rick, Ricky's brain has like discovered that one of his uh his patients is this blind woman who has psychic powers and he's realized that she can psychically link into Ricky and see Ricky's thoughts and his entire past history so like two real the... niche patients or uh, <laughs> yeah like and how are they in the same are they in the same thing? hospital or in the same city I mean like it seems like Ricky has to go somewhere he has to get in that guy's car. Also, who's going to pick up a fucking hitchhiker? Why well, aren't social that's services That's what I was going to say. On? So that's what I wanted to get to. So so I just need to, just need to add that piece. Yeah, we need to add that piece in there that there's the psychic blind girl who's our main character. Who um, is such a terrible actress. It took me... This is my second watch. Probably my last. But it was my second watch. And it, I oh, forgot oh. completely she was blind. I was 20 minutes in. <laughs> and then she meets Jerry, the, her, her brother's girlfriend. I'm like... Oh, she's blind. Oh, <laughs> that explains everything. Yeah, they really, really don't put that out lead. there. And I th and, and somehow the film seems super ableist because of it. Like <laughs> man, it is because Jerry's like, so um, how long have you been blind? Like, what kind of question is that? I mean, <laughs> Goodness. She looks at her watch uh, with her eyes <laughs> for sure function. See, that's, um, that would make this movie so much funnier if um, Laura is the name of the main character, mm -hmm. the blind the blind orphan, um, who has the Blind Orphan Award, according to her therapist, or as her brother, doesn't matter. Um, the men in this movie are all interchangeable pieces of garbage. Um, but Both so, from Twin Peaks. <laughs> uh, there is one character that is not from Twin Peaks, and it is... Um, it's the the lieutenant, oh, and man. that dude is Robert Culp, and he was the guy. His IMDb is nuts. Do we want to get into that yet, or <laughs> yeah, do we want to talk about? Yeah, that let's later? let's talk about that, and then I'll get to what bothered me about the nurse scene later on. All right, okay. believe in, it or in... not, he's walking on air. All right, because he was the best friend, helper, and greatest American hero. And the best oh, part God. about it, yeah, it, yeah, and he, um, I love that. That this is the intro to his IMDb, IMDb bio. Tall, slim, and exceedingly good-looking American leading man, Robert Culp. Um, someone take away Robert Culp's IMDb creds, which was my first joke, but then my second joke is like, oh, 
he passed away a couple years ago. Somebody else is doing that. So there's a weird <laughs> fan base for big Robert fan. Cole. Big fan. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's very – I'll never be able to plumb the depths of the human psyche, all right? <laughs> uh, so – what bothers me the the first like this movie's a bad movie there's no there's no if ands buts about it like it is a bad movie but mm -hmm. there's this scene where apparently in the original script when ricky killed a santa claus the director thought that the scene oh, was yeah. too cruel too so mean. he was so like weird. so he was like i'm gonna fire that actor who played the santa the first time we shot it and we're gonna reshoot this with me the director playing santa claus and I'm going to just kind of ad lib it as like Santa's drunk, which raises a million questions because like I'm kind of a little bit over the like the drunk bad Santa trope. But like, how is a drunk Santa getting hired in a hospital of all places? You're not <laughs> drunk like, when you get hired. That's true. Oh, but yeah, so you got this drunk Santa roaming around the hospital, right? Storms into Ricky's room, <laughs> makes a lot of really awful jokes about Ricky being in a coma. Pericoma? Yeah, pericoma, yeah, pericoma was one of them. Um, and then... Ricky kills him and then it jumps to the nurse yeah. who's already like her death has already been foretold by the psychic blind woman uh who's like have that a was great just day. them re recycling yeah she know, goes she goes have a great day and she goes you won't <laughs> <laughs> walks out. but Ricky walks up to the nurse now at this point my assumption is that Ricky killed Santa and took Santa's outfit that because, would have made a lot more sense for the yeah, entire crux of the film, yeah. too. Because the because the nurse looks up and goes, I want to get this actually verbatim. She says, how can I help you? And it's not <laughs> until the person that she's talking to grabs, like, scissors that she starts no, it's a to scream. scalpel. And a why scalpel. does the nurse's station have a scalpel, a clean yeah. scalpel Yeah, right just there. a clean scalpel chilling there. Grabs a scalpel and kills her. When some, that's when somebody forgets theirs at home and has to come up and be like, "Hey, do you have an extra scalpel? Like, if you're playing yeah. in a hotel, if you don't bring a toothbrush, it's <laughs> we're the same thing. in a hotel because I went to elementary school pencils, but that's me. Oh yeah, 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 yeah that's good. But I, uh, what blew my mind was when it jump cuts to Rick, Ricky leaving the hospital, and he's still in his hospital gown with his brain exposed. And I'm like, so this nurse looked up at a person with a brain in the jar. <laughs> And just goes, like it's how not can I help a new you? Character like or a new a new um patient. He had to have been there since. So this movie is what ninety one and and Silent Night Deadly Two is eighty six, eighty seven. Yeah. I don't know. It's supposed to be five years later. Like I think yeah. in plot, it's been years. Like it's yeah. not like he got shot and this is like the next week. He's been peri coma for years. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't I, I don't know if that makes it better or worse that we can <laughs> that we we can use that term on the show. Maybe we can't use that term on the show, but we're just quoting the drunk Santa who is played by. You you didn't point this out, did you? The director it's played by the director. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and he, he was like, I got to make it so that you you want him to get killed, which is funny yes. because no one else deserves to die in this movie. But here we go. Except are. the director of this movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but like the other I thing is, it's not a heartache. Uh, again, yeah. my my interpretation is like she doomsays the nurse. Mm -hmm. So they're in the same hospital and she leaves with so much time ahead of Ricky who somehow has hitchhiked his way to her grandmother's house before also, she can get I, there. I just want to make a quick note, and it, this bothered me way more than it, it needed to, but when Laura first comes up to the nurse's desk and is like, hey, can you keep an eye out for a red Jeep? My brother's coming. And the nurse is like, I'm way too busy. There's no, like, there's no windows anywhere but also i just realized laura's blind never mind it doesn't <laughs> yeah she doesn't know so she's the the, the nurse never is mind. so busy that the nurse is so uh, busy that, that she can't but, that she like she doesn't even recognize ricky with a brain half yeah. exposed <laughs> hey man when you got those work blinders on busy day at the hospital <laughs> you know sometimes you right. don't know what the fuck's going on yeah no it's and the problem i really have is like at this point i know i watched the movie like like i know i was looking at the screen but, but man, there's a whole lot of nothing that happens for about 30 minutes. Ricky kills like three or four people. There's an awful shot Which of sounds a head like it in a be table. Something, but it's yeah. nothing. No, it's yeah. nothing. It's nothing. The pacing is zero. so bad. I, things happen. You're right. Things happen. But the pacing is so incredibly bad that mm -hmm. it's, it's like all time passes and no time passes. Yeah. Um, also, I need to point out the fact that, um, the director's name is Monty Hellman, which I could have sworn was a 
stage name, but uh, I originally had that written as like, this has to be a stage name. And then I did some IMDb trivia like Matt did. And I realized that no, it is his real name because his daughter is has the same last name. So there is a hell man out there who is making, who made horror movies and- Who's raised in hell, it. man. <laughs> Sorry. Hell, no. uh, it's more like, uh, uh what's the ghost of frog town um uh, hell comes to frog town say yeah, hell man don monty hell man comes to frog town <laughs> there we go. man that joke i had to string that one out like a really heavy poop all right there was hey uh just for uh, wrestling fans out there there was a hell comes to frog town reference on AEW dynamite that like i popped for it dude i was so i was like i cannot believe somebody's referencing hell comes to frog town on television in 2021 2021 yeah. i'm not sure about that yeah no, we're still very much trapped in 2020 don't let yeah. anyone tell you otherwise <laughs> don't uh, get it twisted and you know what next year it's going to be 2020 also yeah <laughs> that's right oh man set up oh uh and... quick quick uh, uh plug too uh yes, my, yeah, my, be my beer is uh santa's black blood it is from Abomination oh. Brewing last year, but it's a stout, so it hangs oh, out. It's, it's a better, double pastry yeah. stout with vanilla beans, milk sugar, and eggnog spices. So, but then I realized there's not a lot of Santa going on in this movie. So, there's enough, there's, there's, there's there's enough there's, to there's, get by with it, but it's there's uh, a there's a drunk Santa, drink. so it makes sense that you're drinking a Santa beer. Or, or like drunk Santa was drinking like bourbon. Oh like, yeah, he, that was a wild turkey bourbon. baby. That was <laughs> yeah. He was he was just trying to get there. He wasn't trying to enjoy the ride. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's funny because I knew that Kyle. Well, I I had a pretty good assertion that Kyle was going to bring a, a Christmas themed beer for this, and I I have um either one or two, but they're 16 ounces, they're not 12 ounces, and and mm -hmm. I don't feel well today, so I'm not going to no, be able to make a 16 ouncer like this. No. I'm going to drink like. A quarter of it and be like wow i feel like even worse um <laughs> yes. but my buddy's my buddy has a brewery here in akron and it's called 83 brewery and he makes i don't like christmas ale because those most of the time they just taste like cinnamon and clove and right they just give me a stomach ache but he makes an amazing christmas ale it's the only one that i can stomach and he calls it uh oh it's it's the reference to um damn it it's reference to to christmas vacation Twenty five thousand sparkling lights or twenty thousand sparkling lights whatever it is oh gotcha yeah yeah, yeah. yeah i don't that i've seen vacation like the Christmas vacation, like twice in my life, and yeah. I know that I'm gonna sound like Matt. You might want to cut that out so I don't sound no, so stupid. I can't edit this one, we don't Ooh, have time. Like... <laughs> oh, no. Keep digging. You know, also, <laughs> the worst thing about you not letting us do gremlins is the fact that you have no foresight. Um, I can't speak to your foreskin, I'm assuming that that is gone as well. That's but... all gone, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, they left a huge horse cock, but they took the, the foreskin. <laughs> and your foresight, because last week we discussed Piranha, which is Joe Dante's first movie with Gelsey, and we could have discussed Gremlins, which is also a Joe Dante film, and it would have been a perfect dovetail. It would have worked just fine. We would have had a better time watching it than Silent Night, Deadline Night 3. But I understand We're having a downside. great conversation. We're having a great conversation. <laughs> yes, That's yes. all that matters. We like to have <laughs> fun here. <laughs> you know, I, I do have to point out some things here that uh, another... <laughs> I read... One, count them one user um, review on IMDb because I had to stop after the first sentence because there's no way that they could, they could be topped. And it was <laughs> Samantha Scully, who plays Laura, the blind orphan, is one of the worst actresses that ever lived. It's not surprising that her career was so brief. And then I went to look and she has four movies, including this. So they weren't wrong, yeah. you know? They, they didn't have just a vendetta. They were like actually no, I mean, taking into account. Really, she, was she was giving really like, bad. it's funny how much of a, 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 a cliff she drops off of because the very first scene of this movie, her eyes are closed and she's acting like she's having a nightmare or whatever because she is or seeing visions or whatnot. And um, she's given some serious 1980, 1991 Jennifer Connelly yeah. vibe. And right. Jennifer Connelly 1991 is like impeccable, untouchable, you yeah, know, like. I know absolute goddess and then she starts acting <laughs> right and uh that just it's it's a very steep drop off man well they, i mean really there's there's not much else to say when it comes to the rest of the movie it's just like ricky kills a kills bunch of people for no one no no reason yeah and so then, nice to him and then ricky 
Ricky gets killed at end of movie. And then Bill Mosley gets his one line at the end of the movie where he just pops out and is like, and a happy new year. Like <laughs> he's, it's, bum, it's bum. a, yeah, it's a waste of, but it's such a bad movie. I'm so glad that they. Is this the slump of Bill Mosley's career? Because I don't know. I don't um, know if it's ever had a peak either. Like, I think it's right. just a flat line. Well, I'd say Devil's Rejects because that was a huge success. Right. Yeah, but I don't think it made him a household name. Like, <laughs> just because just because you're in a big movie doesn't mean that your career's really hit a, a plateau or a peak or anything. I mean, I did. Uh, record an interview with Ginger Lynn, who I did not realize until later on when she referenced Rob Zombie that I'm like, oh shit, yeah, oh, she's right, in, yeah. yeah, she's in Devil's Rejects and 31. So, yeah. um, damn. Um, but yeah, so I want. Well, no, so this was so this is 91. So it's post. Not that Savini's Night of the Living Dead was huge either, but it, it's the well, year after that. He's already done Texas Chainsaw Massacre two, mm-hmm, so yeah. it's right. definitely taken. It's heading into a valley before Rob Zombie right. pulls him out. And that's just, I mean, a lot of people, you, a lot of uh, horror fans, which I disagree with, but could say that it's because '90s horror is like just, it was just bad. So everybody who might have had a chance. Just yeah. plummeted. I think, and we're one, point. we're one '90s ass podcast. I feel yeah, like as soon I feel as you like said we were... the '90s are bad. My my brain was like a collage of all the movies that 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 I've picked from the yeah. '90s for this show. It's, and I'm not yeah. just talking about 1999 because yeah, I, I want to like ask you, Scott, what what's the movie that jumps to your mind? Because mine's pretty embarrassing, actually. Oh, if we're talking, so like when he says nine, '90s movies are bad, and you think of all the '90s films that you picked like what's the one that like jumps to the forefront let me I explain why i picked this one but <laughs> ticks okay because yeah i feel good because, because mine was that's dr like, giggles so it's in yeah, the same yes, vein exactly. it's like there's less mid 90s when you say 90s movie i'm thinking mid 90s because mm-hmm. stuff it's like a, house on haunted hill 99 and like all of the uh, dark castle stuff besides that the pre-scream almost, era of the 90s those are basically right. the 2000s you know, right, like, yeah. and Scream is ninety six, so yeah. it's all that ninety I'm thinking to like, ninety five is like yeah, where true. it's kind of yeah. a dead zone for people. Uh, all right, there's still so good stuff to be had. For one sure. One last thing I did want to say about Silent Night, Deadly Night 3's cast: Robert Culp. Let's go back to Robert. Culp. Oh yeah, yeah, you were going to tell. So, me. please. One more thing about Robert Culp: he was also a main voice actor on the cartoon Gargoyles. Um, so I feel like he really, and he was a Santa sleigh in 2005 with Goldberg. So he definitely had a serious commitment to Christmas horror God, that I cannot sorry. deny. <laughs> yeah. Nobody right. could deny. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let's, let's dive into real quick. What our double features would be with this movie. Um, you know, Kyle, you're still, you're still newish to the show. So let's say that you get the first pick on this one. Um, you know, I, because it was a live show, I didn't, I didn't consider this question. Um, <laughs> well, it's not like this is the first time you've been on the show. Even before no. you, were, uh, you were a guest two fucking years ago. I know. I can't, you, I can't use this, the, the I'm new here excuse anymore. No, you, uh, you never no, I would love to do some other sort of like, um, uh, even though this ventures out of a hospital, I want to stick with some sort of like dream scape uh, situation and not necessarily Christmas either. Uh, well, no, hold on. Hold on. I've got to talk this, this through. Just give, me like two, <laughs> give, me, give me two minutes. And if I'm still babbling, <laughs> fucking get me out of here. But um, okay. So I want to do Christmas, but I want to do weird. Uh, fuck it, dude. No, I just want to do Toy Maker, a Silent Night, Daily Night Five. Just like I love that movie cleanse, so fucking just much. It's so how good. is that a cleanse? I mean, that's a good pick, but it's also it makes you feel dirtier. Than... Uh, I think I think that it is. If you were to go into, I, I would suggest the double feature for people who have not seen either. Right. Oh, so yeah. I would suggest going in. If you watch three, be bummed. Watch five, be like. They made that like yeah. in like in the lineage of of this. Um, that would be my that would be my go to. It's not the best, but it's I I feel good about. It. I'm in the Christmas spirit that feels. It's it's right. still my favorite of the franchise. I think, which is crazy because the first movie Ew. exists. But like, Ew. I feel I, like you can say that it's your favorite. It doesn't mean that it's the one that you think is the best. No, nah, but it is my favorite. I love watching material. that movie. It, I mean, what other film can you have such great character names as? <laughs> was it Joe Petto and his yes and yeah. his son Joe Petto? Yeah, absolutely <laughs> right. It was great. It was it's great. 
All right, Scott, how about you? Double feature it up. So I was going to go with uh, Silent Night and Deadly Night 4 Initiation because it was it was the uh, the script that should have been Silent Night, Deadly Night 3, but we already w- kind of crossed that bridge. So I'm going to go with the, uh, the fan favorite Elves because right. I don't feel dirty enough after this movie. I really want to get grimy and well, watch... It is this movie's tame. This movie is really... It's very tame. tame. Considering this could have been a PG thirteen movie had it not been for the bathtub scene. In all honesty, like yeah, it is super. Same tame. for elves, bro. Same for elves. Elves is a PG thirteen movie with the bath- bathtub uh, scene. That's because the MPAA didn't give a shit. No, <laughs> they all right, they um, wanted that movie. Really, in a shocking move, maybe I am the Grinch. I'm not going with a Christmas movie. What? Well, uh, because you? That's okay because you have a Christmas podcast. True. I'm going with another movie where Bill Mosley's brain is exposed, which is obviously Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah. Two. Yeah. You no, know, I, I, I yeah. do want to say that if I wasn't in the Christmas spirit, which is, if I'm watching a Christmas movie, I'm gonna try and overdose because it's Christmas. You know, like I don't right. love Christmas, but I love holidays, right? Uh, so I will, I will watch anything that's holiday based. If I was a different man and I was going to be like Matt Kelly where I was like, you know what? I'm going to buck the trend. I'm not going to, I'm not going to fit this mold. Fuck you. I won't do what you tell me. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm, I would go with hospital massacre because uh, that movie is basically the same concept, except the, the killer and the survivor girl don't leave the hospital. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think that's fair. Um, and just because we're a little low on time, we will do just a, the quickest round of what did you watch this week. Uh, uh, I'll go last. This? Scott, go. Well, I got two things. One, I want to give a quick shout out to Penny Dollarhide. I think that's how you say her name. Um, we will probably be sharing her her uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night cosplay. Have you seen that cosplay, Matt? Yeah. It's literally like deer antlers out of her stomach. It's the most clever um, ho- uh, co- holiday cosplay I've ever seen, horror ho- cosplay I've ever seen. Uh, so she's just fantastic. Matt met her this summer at uh, the Mahoning Drive-In for the Critters Fest. And yep. uh, she was dressed up as the uh, female bounty hunter from Critters 2. So uh, what I did watch that I wanted to mention was RIPD because I dropped on Netflix or something. Oh my God, I forgot that was a movie. I did too. And I, I was, I remember it being such a, <laughs> it was like, I so gotta bad. tell you, I can see John's camera and he's just going like this. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, is that I did. That movie is awful. <laughs> and if you want to follow it up with that director's next movie, equally awful, Snake Eyes. G.I. Joe origin Ooh. story. But where's that money Ooh. coming from? Ooh. I don't know, man. Like they gotta stop hiring that guy. Those movies are terrible. <laughs> well, the thing is, is that this I love how it just pops in and pops back out like Father <laughs> Christmas. The thing is, is that I didn't hate it as much as I was expecting to because I was it's my insomnia, my my little lullaby to get me back to sleep while I've been sick the last couple of days. So if you are um if you're if you're feeling sick and you need to feel I have an out of body experience and get away from your your physical body for a little bit. Watch RIPD. How oh, you go um, next? Yeah, I watched a documentary called Some Kind of Heaven uh, that the New York Times did. Uh, I think they released it in 2020. It's out now on um, VOD, and it's a documentary about a retirement community in Florida called the Villages or the Villages. Oh, no. um, Villages. Yes, it is, and it follows a couple characters who were maybe not quite exactly who they the that community pitches as their clientele you know what i mean so it's like it follows like one guy who doesn't live there but it frequents that community it follows uh, a woman who is now a widow who works as a nurse there and she's trying to figure out her life again and it's it's shot four by three um and it just really has this uh slightly home video slightly errol morris voyeuristic like situation and it does not make you feel good um but it is a fascinating look at like that community again from from sort of like the outside perspective but if it's only three of those people in a community of like over a hundred i think it's over a hundred thousand people live there it's huge now it's huge um and and that's obviously everybody has a story, right? And especially as people get older, their stories are lengthier. Everybody has like a different, it's just, it's really interesting. Uh, I highly recommend if you want to drop a couple bucks or if, even if you wait until it's available somewhere uh, through a subscription that you have, but um, it's, it's a, it's a really interesting doc. 
Cool. And uh, I've finally been taking advantage of my brother's access to HBO Max and yes. watched uh, two episodes of Music Box on there, um, which is like from the guy who did 30 for 30 for ESPN, but now it's all music-based documentaries. Oh. Uh, so he did the documentary on uh, Woodstock 99, which is just yes. like oh, yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. And then the most recent one uh, was called Jagged, which was about Alanis Morissette recording Jagged Little Pill. Uh, which was also really good, really powerful, really interesting. Um, I think of the two, the Woodstock 91, 99 one would be the one I'd recommend more yeah. to somebody. Uh, just a very interesting look at a very bad day. Uh, and you kind of just walk away from that. Like as much as they threw a lot of artists under the bus, like the promoter is 110% the biggest person mm -hmm. to be blaming on that. And you just watch him throw every musician that played that show under the bus. Like, oh, this is all Fred Durst's fault because he said to break stuff. And then it like cuts to an audience member. He's like, why would you hire Fred Durst if you didn't want him to sing their biggest song? Their song. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's ridiculous. Has anybody um, listened to the new Limp Bizkit album? It's uh, weirdly meta and kind of okay. <laughs> I, I listened to the one song. Is Daddy... Yeah, yeah, there. Yeah, or something. Or yeah. I mean, it's fine. It's, it's fine. It's, it's, I mean, it's better more than, than I expected from yeah, this. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have low expectations on this show. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. yeah, there we go. Okay, Matt, I got to tell you what I watched this week. Spider Man No Way. <laughs> <laughs> listening to the Geekscape Network. You're listening to the Geekscape Network.